I will be joining grad school soon. And to say that my foundations in computer science and electrical engineering are rusty is an understatement. So I have decided that before I leave for facing torment in grad school, I should brush up on the topics that I like and also the topics that I really need to study ASAP. Although I have already started studying some of the topics, I wish to share with you how I am planning to take on this task and on the way, I guess I could use some help from the Hawthorne effect. At the very least, we can all laugh at my naiveness when I won't get much done by the end of summer. So. Here goes nothing. Although electrical engineering was my major in my undergrad, I still feel lacking in the basics. So I enrolled myself in edX's Circuits and Electronics 1 course that covers basic circuit analysis. Although it is an old online course offered by MIT, it is the only one I could find on the basics of electrical circuits. It has great reviews and the course page claims that it is equivalent to the introductory course on electronics taught at MIT. I am now 2 weeks into the course and quite satisfied with the course content. The course is accompanied by a book that can be accessed online via the edX website and it contains more in-depth theory and lots of problems. One of the things that I really like about this course is its stress on practical applications and the lab exercises. This is reflected in the fun lab videos where the instructors saw open electronic devices to have a look inside or in a particular instance test the limits for using a pickle as a resistor. The course has a simple in-built simulator where you need to prepare circuits with the required specifications and submit them as solutions to test exercises. You can also just play around in the simulator like in a sandbox mode. This course is the first part of a three part course. The second part goes deeper into passive components and MOSFETs, while the third part combines these components in various circuits and focuses on their applications. Right now I am only working on the first course but I will definitely complete the other two parts at some point. Also note that these courses are free to audit and you only need to pay if you wish to opt for a verified certificate. I found signals and systems as a subject very difficult in my undergrad. It was probably because I could not visualize the signals that I was working with. I believe I now have better tools and I am more skilled at programming and creating simulations. So. I feel more confident that I can tackle it this time. I will start working on this subject soon and may complement this study by including an online course due to the importance of being able to visualize the content that I am studying. The course will be Signal Systems Part 1 offered by IIT Bombay on edX and as I move on to discrete signals, I may study the Digital Signal Processing Specialization by EPFL. The book that I will be following is aptly titled Signals and Systems by Alan V. Oppenheim. It is unlikely that I will finish this book in its entirety in just one summer, but I will try to cover as much as I can. And once I have covered this, I will then consider myself ready to deal with this beast. This is the book that was used for teaching about op-amps in my college course. This is an old book, but it does a decent job of covering most of the required topics from the theory of feedback to applications of op-amp, like in triple five timer IC and voltage regulators like 7805 or 7809 ICs. This is not a book that I plan to study this summer, but I am putting it here as two of my friends and I recently went through this book for four weeks, each person simulating two circuits in LTSPY 17 each week and we also made weekly reports. The reports are available in this repository and they were prepared with the hopes that the knowledge would stick or they would serve later as quick reference notes. The reports are probably not very useful but I guess you could use the template of our planning which is available in the repository's readme to do a similar one month group study with your friends or colleagues. In my undergraduate studies, I did not have many computer science courses. I mainly studied algorithms and data structures and some object-oriented programming. 
I have attempted to study algorithms and data structures before, but I always gave up. In order to slowly ease into the subject, I am reading the book Grokking Algorithms by Aditya Bhargava. The book is targeted towards new programmers and is really well written in my opinion. I only have a couple of chapters left to finish this book and till now I found that the introduction to recursion section is very good as it introduces the notion of base case and recursive case via Euclid's algorithm. The code examples are simplistic and in Python. So one downside of this is that when you go from this book to implementing the algorithms in languages like Java or C++, you will be overwhelmed. So my recommendation is to follow up this book by an academic course textbook like the one by Corman or Sedgwick and you should be fine. I have never undergone a formal networking course other than the few classes that were taught in 12th standard computer science class. We all had that ethical hacking Kali Linux phase and I first got interested in networking during this time but the interest in the subject hasn't waned but rather increased as I began to learn about the importance of networking in backend web development and game development like the netcode in multiplayer games. I have been working through Google's course on Coursera named the bits and bytes of computer networking and although I am overwhelmed by the amount of information provided in that course, I believe it will be worth it when I will finally be able to get the big picture after reading through all the layers of the OSI model. I also got Hussein Nasser's networking course for quite a great deal by using one of his promo codes. So I may go through it too in order to get the perspective of a backend developer on the subject. If you don't like courses, I think computer networking, a top-down approach by Jim Coros will be a great book for you, as many people have recommended it to me in the past. Every once in a while, I get this sudden urge to learn game development. Last time, I binged through one of Heartbeast's playlists and this time I finished his RPG course. At the peak of this urge, I and my friend plan to finish Mizizis's Retrographics FPS course, but this plan never took off. Around the same time, I also wanted to delve deeper into C++, so I decided to do both and picked up SDL Game Development by Sean Mitchell. It was during this time that I also created the video on setting up Clangd in NeoVim. Yes, it is an old book by Software Lifetime Standards as it was published in 2013 and also has a lot of typos and mistakes. But it was the only book I could find on SDL2. I have gone through 6 chapters but now I am stuck on the 7th as the book uses an old version of the software tiled for creating time maps and the code in the book does not work with the current version. The older version is only available on Windows, so I could just switch to a Windows machine temporarily to finish the rest of the three chapters, or I would have to refactor a lot of this chapter's code to make it work with the new version. I want to refactor the code, but my plate of work right now is already filled, so I have decided to put off this book till the next month. I had my affair with Arduino, played around with Node MCU, learned about MCU architecture at college through Intel 8085 and 8051, and finally got introduced to MBS systems via Atmega microcontrollers. I may end up with a career in MBS systems, so I need to prepare for the industry needs. I decided to look into both Texas Instruments MSP432 and ST Microelectronics STM32 nuclear board. Early this year, I completed a course offered by U Colorado Boulder that uses MSP432, but sadly I could not work on the project hands-on as I could not afford the hardware. But I was able to buy the STM32 nuclear board and after researching about good courses for this board, I decided to go for Fastbit Embedded Brain Academy's course on Udemy. They have a YouTube channel too, so you can demo their content. I have been going through their videos and they are pretty good. While we are talking about embedded systems, I would highly recommend that one goes through the course NAND to Tetris. I have completed the first part of the course where you start with basic logic gates and gradually move up to building a simple computer where you can play Pong. Highly recommended. I have always been bad at math. 
I think this is partly because the subject was taught to me in the wrong way and partly because I am lazy. Since my 12th standard, I have always felt that I did not learn calculus right. I could solve problems and calculus, but I never really understood what I was doing. I knew that if I wanted to understand and excel in higher mathematics, I would have to master calculus. Few months back, I got myself this book on high school calculus by the Russian mathematician L. V. Tarasov. It is a really old book, first published in 1983. I first got to know about it from the foreword of the book Concepts of Physics, which is a really popular physics textbook here in India. An IIT Kanpur physics professor in the foreword of this physics book mentions how it reminded him of Tarasov's writing. I'm going on a tangent here to mention how the search for this calculus book led to the discovery of the site Mir titles. So, from what I understand, at one point of time, Soviet books were quite popular in India, but now many of these books are out of publication and hence quite hard to find. The people behind this site collect these books, scan them, and then make them publicly available. For some books, like this calculus book, they have also started projects on GitLab to typeset them in LaTeX. Now back to the calculus book, I completed it a few weeks ago and I am so glad that I read it. I plan to make a full review video after a second read, so I am not going to go in depth into the content now, but in my opinion, this book explains the physical meaning of derivatives and integrals pretty well. The book starts with a discussion on sequences, explores functions and their limits, and then slowly builds up to differential and integral calculus. The book then finally ends after a light discussion on differential equations. If you are already good at calculus, this book will be too bland for you, but it is great if you want to relearn it or are new to it. I must also mention that the book has very few exercises and they are all only towards the end of the book. So if you are looking for exercises, you will have to complement this book with yet another one. Once you are done with this, you can move on to textbooks like the ones by Michael Spivak or James Stewart. I have decided to read Stewart's book and I shall start working on it once it arrives in the mail. While working on this book, I also went through the calculus course offered by the University of Sydney on Coursera. I am almost done with the course with only a few videos and exercises remaining. This course devotes an entire week on pre-calculus and this really helped me fill some gaps in my knowledge. For me, some of the highlights of the course were the videos on Sandwich Theorem, Riemann Sums and the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Do check it out if you can. After finishing Tarasov's book, I was hungry for some more math. No, I am not ready to get into books like this, but while browsing Amazon for similar books, I came across Jay Cummings' books. I read through the sample of his book proofs and I knew I had to read it. I am not very good at understanding proofs, let alone at writing one, so this book will be a great addition to my study plan. Although the book covers a lot of topics like induction, logic and relations, the first few chapters are devoted to learning to understand mathematical proofs. The author handles this really well with well written explanations and interesting examples. It is clear that the author prioritizes understanding over everything else. I am a few pages in and I am definitely going to complete this book. He also has a similar book on real analysis that I shall look into later. It will probably help me deal with Rudin's book. Most of the courses I mention in this video are not free, but you can audit them at no cost. For the books, many popular ones do have online version that you can read online for free. Even if a book does not have an online version, you can look for another popular book on the same topic that does have one. I'll be leaving for grad school in October, so let's see how much I can accomplish in the time that I have. Now, after watching this video, if you are underwhelmed or feel that I am covering very basic topics, then I would say that I am trying my best and covering simple topics because I feel my foundations are shaky and hence, this is my attempt to strengthen them. There is also no reason to be overwhelmed. I was able to reach this point of progress just by studying 2-3 to three hours each day and it has been quite a few months since I started. I believe being consistent is the key. 
Also, when I start something new, I always remind myself that the best time to start was a year ago. The next best time is now. I think I heard this on the internet and it is a Chinese proverb. Oh, you're still here. Thanks for sticking for so long or sticking directly to this point. Here is another recommendation for you. If you are into Linux or want to get familiar with the Linux command line, check out The Missing Semester of CS Education by MIT. It is completely free and covers a lot of interesting topics. The content might be too much for a beginner, but believe me, it is worth going through. I loved it and maybe you would like it too. See ya.